The Terrible Old Man by H. P. Lovecraft It was the design of Angelo Ricci and Joe Zanuck and Manuel Silva to call on the terrible old man. This old man dwells all alone in a very ancient house on Water Street near the sea, and is reputed to be both exceedingly rich and exceedingly feeble which forms a situation very attractive to the men of the profession of Messrs. Ricci, Sanic, and Silva. For that profession was nothing less dignified than robbery. The inhabitants of Kingsport say and think many things about the terrible old man, which generally kept him safe from the attention of gentlemen like Mr. Ricci and his colleagues, despite the almost certain fact that he hides a fortune of indefinite magnitude somewhere about his musty and venerable abode he is in truth a very strange person believed to have been a captain of east india clipper ships in his day so old that no one can remember when he was young and so taciturn that few know his real name among the gnarled trees in the front yard of his aged and neglected place he maintains a strange collection of large stones oddly grouped and painted so that they resemble the idols of some obscure eastern temple this collection frightens away most of the small boys who love to taunt the terrible old man about his long white hair and beard or to break the small paned windows of his dwelling with wicked missiles but there are other things which frighten the older and more curious folk who sometimes steal up to the house to peer in through the dusty panes these folks say that on a table in the bare room on the ground floor are many peculiar bottles on each a small piece of lead suspended pendulum wise from a string and they say that the terrible old man talks to these bottles addressing them by such names as jack scarface long tom spanish joe peters and mate ellis and whenever he speaks to a bottle the little lead pendulum within makes certain definite vibrations as if in answer those who have watched the tall lean terrible old man in these peculiar conversations do not watch him again but angelo ricci and joe zanuck and manuel silva were not of kingsport blood they were of that new and heterogeneous alien stock which lies outside the charmed circle of new england life and traditions and they saw in the terrible old man merely a tottering almost helpless greybeard who could not walk without the aid of his knotted cane and whose thin weak hands shook pitifully they were really quite sorry in their way for the lonely unpopular old fellow whom everybody shunned and at whom all the dogs barked singularly but business is business and to a robber whose soul is in his profession there is a lure and challenge about a very old and very feeble man who has no account at the bank and who pays for his few necessities in the village store with spanish gold and silver minted two centuries ago messrs ricci sanic and silva selected the night of april eleventh for their call mr ricci and mr silva were to interview the poor old gentleman whilst zanuck waited for them and their presumably metallic burden with a covered motor-car in ship street by the gate in the tall rear wall of their host's grounds desire to avoid needless explanations in case of unexpected police intrusions prompted these plans for a quiet and unostentatious departure as prearranged the three adventurers started out separately in order to prevent any evil-minded suspicions afterward messrs ricci and silva met in water street by the old man's front gate and although they did not like the way the moon shone down upon the painted stones through the budding branches of the gnarled trees they had more important things to think about than mere idle suspicion they feared it might be unpleasant work making the terrible old man loquacious concerning his hoarded gold and silver for aged sea captains are notably stubborn and perverse still he was very old and feeble and there were two visitors messrs ricci and silva were experienced in the art of making unwilling persons voluble 
and the screams of a weak and exceptionally venerable man can be easily muffled so they moved up to the one lighted window and heard the terrible old man talking childishly to his bottles with pendulums then they donned masks and knocked politely at the weather-stained oaken door waiting seemed very long to mr zanuck as he fidgeted restlessly in the covered motor-car by the terrible old man's back gate in ship street he was more than ordinarily tender-hearted and he did not like the hideous screams he had heard in the ancient house just after the hour appointed for the deed had he not told his colleagues to be as gentle as possible with the pathetic old sea captain very nervously he watched the narrow oaken gate in the high and ivy-clad stone wall frequently he consulted his watch and wondered at the delay had the old man died before revealing where the treasure was hidden had a thorough search become necessary mr zanuck did not like to wait so long in the dark in such a place then he sensed a soft tread or tapping on the wall inside the gate heard a gentle fumbling at the rusty latch and saw the narrow heavy door swing inward and in the pallid glow of the single dim street lamp he strained his eyes to see what his colleagues had brought out of that sinister house which loomed so close behind but when he looked he did not see what he had expected for his colleagues were not there at all but only the terrible old man leaning quietly on his knotted cane and smiling hideously mr zanuck had never before noticed the color of the man's eyes now he saw that they were yellow little things make considerable excitement in little towns which is the reason that kingsport people talked all that spring and summer about the three unidentifiable bodies horribly slashed as with many cutlasses and horribly mangled as by the tread of many cruel boot heels which the tide washed in and some people even spoke of things as trivial as the deserted motor-car found on ship street or certain especially inhuman cries probably of a stray animal or migratory bird heard in the night by wakeful citizens but in this idle village gossip the terrible old man took no interest at all he was by nature reserved and when one is aged and feeble one's reserve is doubly strong besides so ancient a sea captain must have witnessed scores of things much more stirring in the far-off days of his unremembered youth end of the terrible old man read by alan davis drake